Hello, how are you doing today? Did you have a nice evening yesterday? Yeah. All right. Um, as you can see, my name is Stan, and uh, I would like to talk about uh, augmented reality and uh, basically what it is, how it differs from virtual reality, and uh, what we need in order to get it working. How does it realize where it is and uh, what is around? Um, I'm pretty sure you all heard over, o already about uh, virtual reality, and maybe you heard it uh, just recently, yesterday, maybe, from someone. And uh, some of you already heard about the augmented reality as well, but what it really is, what the augmented reality is doing. Augmented reality is uh, trying to change the actual world where you are at the actual time. So it's happening, um, it's, it's happening right now. The goal is uh, that we don't need to do only visual augmentation. The augmentation can be anything. It can be, it can be sound, it can be movement, it can be smell, it can be any kind of vibrations. Uh, in other words, the, the augmentation is an enhancement of current perception of reality. The difference between augmentation and virtualization as I said, if augmentation is happening right now in the real time, uh, right here, the virtualization is not doing that. It is basically creating new world, different world. What does that mean? Uh, if I use the example, if you want to ride your roller coaster, with virtual reality you can do it right now, right here, but you will feel like you are somewhere else. So if we create the virtual reality application, which is... Uh, making you riding the roller coaster, you just put the headset on and you feel like, wow, now I'm in amusement park and now I'm riding the roller coaster, wow. But in the real time, you are still sitting here in the chair. With the augmentation, uh, yeah, with the augmentation, we cannot do this because we cannot just take you from here and move you somewhere else. You would literally need to stand up, need to go to amusement park, sit down in the carriage, and only then we can change what you see. So let's say you are already riding, and we can show you different rails. We can make it more scary and show them broken, or we can show different surrounding around you, so you feel like you're riding it somewhere in the Alps, in the mountains. But the important is that you need to be there. What is needed for this augmented reality to show you different things where you are? Obviously, we need to have some kind of input components. We need to have sensors, and uh, these sensors can be rigidly placed on the device. They can be connected to the device wirelessly or with the wires. And if we want to show the augment, uh, if we want to get the augmentation out of the device, we need to have some kind of output components. And these output components, they are of course based on what the device is doing. But if we make it simple and we talk only about the visualization, then there are kind of two main groups. Uh, some of you already tried yesterday our applications, and some of you will try it today. But the first group, or one of the group, is video see-through. It means that f the world is first recorded for you, and in the real time, it is shown to you on the actual device display. But you cannot see through the device. And then there is optical see-through. Uh, you see through the device. It's some kind of glass or something what you have on your head. And it's completely transparent. Plus, it is showing augmentation for you in, the, uh, in, the, in this glass. Um, and the input components, of course, it depends what we need to do. So there can be any kind of uh, accelerometers, GPS, compasses, camera, or cameras. Uh, how does the device understand what it is? Like, what is, if, is it the chair, or is this the table, or where am I, and what am I looking for? The, it's, it's really similar to kids, how they learn shapes and how they wander around the house and learn what is behind, what is under, what is on top. It is called spatial understanding or space awareness. Uh, our device needs to understand the same questions as uh, kids when they start wandering around the house, as I said. 
And for this, these mentioned input components are used. Uh, there are, of course, many things to talk about this, but uh, I will try to keep it simple. So computer vision methods are based on the visual odometry. Now you may be wondering what it is, visual odometry. You, I guess you heard already about the odometer. And uh, odometer is something what you have in your car. In, uh, in your car, the odometer is measuring the distance how much you already traveled. So you traveled one kilometer or one mile, and so on. The visual odometry is optical flow of uh, is optical flow vector of moving object. As you can see here, I have the red ball, and the red ball is traveling somewhere in the space. The direction is shown by the vector, and by analyzing different points of this vector, we can determine where the ball is at the at the specific time. <coughs> Sorry. In the case of augmented reality applications, the position and orientation are determined by uh, analyzing different camera images. And that is, the, that is this visual odometry. So we need to analyze where the point has traveled in the time. On the, on the second picture or on the right picture, you can see we have the notebook, and it just moves slightly. And by analyzing different points of it, different features, we know like it's still the same thing, but from different angle. These methods usually consist of two parts. First one is image processing. We need to understand what we see. And uh, for this, there are many different methods used. We, have, uh, we need to find out different interest points. We need to find out optical flows and fiducial markers. What is fiducial marker? That's basically just a ruler. Um, yeah. To find out all these things, all these features, we can use many different methods. But basic ones are edge detection, corner, de corner detection, and the blob detection. The edge detection, just to keep it simple, is trying to find out when the contrast of the image, when we are analyzing it, changes rapidly. So from black to white, or from yellow to blue, and so on. The corner detection, again, just to keep it simple, it is intersection of two or more edges. And by intersecting uh, two and more edges, we can create the lines and curves. The blob detection is trying to find out uh, edges and corners, which are, in some sense, similar to each other. So this is, as you can see on the last picture, it is used usually in the security cameras to, to see if there is someone in the room, or maybe in the cars to read the signpost, and uh, so car know how, how uh, fast you should go. By using these uh, methods, we pass data to second step, so we are able to calculate the space, how it looks. And this is really something what is uh, interesting, but it's also quite technical, and it's a lot about the geometry and the, and the mathematics. We use different kind of projective geometry, algebra, rotation, representation. We can assume that there are some objects with uh, known shapes, known geometry, so some kind of triangles, uh, rectangles, and so on. So we can already calculate by using different uh, uh, geometry and algebra methods the space. If there is not enough of information, simply what we do, we just start moving around with the device, and the device will analyze how these points are changing. So that's this visual odometry. And to voila, if we do it right, then we get the real world, which is on the left side, calculated to the device, which is on the left, uh, right side. This is the same thing. And on the right side, you see how the device see the real world. This is the, this is the calculation. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is something what is uh, interesting for you. And uh, you would like to know what we can do with this in the future. It is kind of hard to predict 
because uh, we don't know how devices will change. But obviously, right now, they are either heavy or big, or the performance is not that good. But I'm pretty sure that uh, it will have really big, big impact on the future businesses. Because even right now, you can already use the virtual reality in your browser. If you have the virtual reality device connected to the computer, and uh, there is a website which supports virtual reality, it has kind of virtual reality mode, the website detects the device, and you can just click the button and see the website in the virtual reality. Obviously, since the augmented reality is working in a different way, we need to first see how these devices will be connected to computers, how we can use it with our websites, or how, how we can actually, what we can do. But the limitation is really just the imagination and uh, what our human body can understand. Because maybe also when you were trying the application with the HoloLens, it was uh, like, first you needed to understand like why, why it works like this. There are also limitations of our body, but I don't think this will be any, any blocker for us. And for those who still didn't see what we have been doing with the augmented reality in past couple of months, I would like you to invite and try and uh, basically do this. You just see things what others don't see. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention.